All right, question number 83, a direct one from mechanics doesn't require big amount of gray matter. A particle is moving with a uniform speed in a circular orbit of radius r. So the path is circular and the circular path is maintained by a central force which varies to inversely proportional to the nth power of r. And if the period of rotation is this, we need to find the dependence of t. Do you find a similarity in Kepler's law t square directly proportional to r cube? The question is of the same nature. This one becomes a more general one. Now the force is in fact you could see k by r raised to the power n and that is m omega square multiplied by r. The force which is the central one is the cause of the centripetal force. Now let us try to see a simple calculation requires here you would be getting omega square is inversely proportional to r raised to the power n plus 1 that is how it goes. And now this is omega square and all I require is to calculate how time depends and t square would be directly proportional to r raised to the power n plus 1 because omega equals to 2 pi by t a straightforward one and the time is going to be r raised to the power n plus 1 divided by 2. Now this is how it goes. Now just try to find the conclusion that time period depends in this particular way. If you remember in gravitation what happens that the force varies as square of the distance in an inverse manner. So, there t square is directly proportional to r cube. You can just even put the value 2 plus 1 is 3 by 2. So, t square directly proportional to r cube just a way to compare. So, this now gives the correct option as option number 2. So, for this particular question, question number 83, the correct option is option number 2. Let us go for question number 84. Question number 84 from modern physics. Well, it is raining modern physics in this question paper. If the series of limit frequency of Lyman series is nu sub L, then the series limit frequency of the front series, we need to calculate that value. Now, let us just try to see, you know, the series for any given thing starts from a certain n and goes on the higher value. Now, if I see the Lyman series, let us try to see the solution part. The Lyman starts from n equals to 1 and n2 would be starting from 2 till infinity. And the 1 to 2 transition is the first member while 1 to infinity is the limit. Now, on the basis of that, let us try to solve it and it comes something like this say 1 by lambda is r z that will be 1. So, 1 by n 1 square minus of 1 by n 2 square is the formula. Now, we need to calculate the you know the frequency. So, that is going to be lambda is c by nu. So, nu is going to be r times c 1 by n 1 square minus 1 by n 2 square. All right, now it is just time to put the value when you talk of Lyman. So, nu L, we need to find the Lyman series frequency and apart from that, we need to calculate the limit. So, the limit is from 1 to infinity. If it was the first member, it was 1 to 2 but the limit is 1 to infinity. So, that is going to be r c 1 by 1 square minus of 1 by infinity. So, that is going to be straight way r c. Call this as equation number 1. Now, let us try to calculate for the fund and for the fund series, let me call this as nu p and that is going to be equals to r c again the limit. So, this will be you know Lyman, Balmer, Parson, Bracket and Fund. So, this value is going to be 5. Let me better write it here 5. So, 5 square that will be 25 minus 1 by infinity. 
So, this is coming out to be RC by 25. Let us call this as equation number 2. Now, there is equation 1 and equation 2. So, quite obviously, nu P is going to be nu L by 25. That is the relation between the limiting frequency of the Lyman and the fund. So, let us see where is the correct option. Let us see. All right. So, here is the correct option. Question number 84 demands the correct option to be 3. Let us move, move to question, question number 85.